Hey, what's going on guys? It's David here from Genzio. We are in Denver, Colorado for ETH Denver. I just wrapped up with Kyle from Definity. Had a great conversation about what Definity is up to, the future of Definity, as well as his thoughts on AI and uh, also on Bitcoin. We had a great conversation. I really look forward to hearing your guys' thoughts. I am here with Kyle from Definity. Kyle, how are you? Thanks. You're doing awesome. Coming to the end of a long weekend. so That's right, man. Yeah. Second to last day. Second. Well, I'm flying home tomorrow, so I'm getting a good night's sleep and then okay. heading home. And where's home? Uh, outside Washington, D.C. East Coast. Yep. Are you, are you from the East Coast? I am, yeah. Nice, man. Nice, yeah. nice. Now, um, how has the event been so far? It's been busy. Um, the main event was great, as always. There's a lot of, a lot of interesting projects and, and interesting people at the main event. And then uh, I've noticed this year, Denver's just been hopping. There's been side events after side events. And, uh, um, and it's been pretty impressive. The Bitcoin community's also uh, decided to show up and, and make a good presence. So it's been awesome. It, it really has. No, the, the energy's been high. Yep. Um, people are, you know, excited to be here. I feel like for me, right, we look forward to ETH Denver mm -hmm. more than any other event. Yeah. All events are fantastic, but ETH Denver really is, uh, is like, when I'm explaining to you, I was like the Super Bowl of crypto events has, you know, in a, in a jock mentality, you know? Yeah. Um, Most events are very kind of like corporate and, and uh, traditional stale. Uh, ETH Denver is just like, there's just a a vibe to it that you don't find at any other event so no for sure credit to them and the city's great oh yeah 100 percent. i haven't spent much time in the past in denver but i really 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 enjoyed it okay yeah yeah, yeah i love it cool man cool let's get into it definity tell us about it yeah so definity's uh um we're basically we say we're a major contributor to the internet computer mm -hmm. uh, the internet computer is a um a decentralized cloud so hosting full stack applications completely on chain um, so, you know, you don't have to be reliant on Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud. Okay. And then when did you get involved? Yeah, I actually, um, uh, so actually I got involved. I was, uh, I worked in pharma and I was working for a vaccine company back in 2020. Uh, we had a COVID vaccine that we had actually done a lot of research on, uh, and we just blew up and our vaccine was, um, uh, highly important. We got a lot of money from the government. And what happened was basically I was in the IT department and I saw firsthand uh, how much money we were spending and how much uh, like access to like the best experts in, in cybersecurity. And yet we still could not secure our, you know, our intellectual property. It just opened my eyes to like the tech, the internet, the internet is like insecure by, by nature. Uh, and there's no way to, you can't spend enough money to protect your, your digital assets. At that same time, um, Dominic Williams, who uh, is the visionary behind the internet computer, he was talking about blockchain as a as a secure internet layer and that if you host applications on chain they're just by nature more secure and it just kind of clicked for me of like wow this is a use case of blockchain that i hadn't heard you know people are talking about you know bitcoin or DeFi or nfts and this was something completely different where it's like you're revolutionizing cybersecurity and, and our entire internet tech stack so uh just got really into the project and was lucky enough to find a job at Definity. Cool, man. Cool. Now we'll take a few steps back and we'll talk about you and your journey. Okay. How did we get to where we are now? Yeah. I mean, so uh, I I was been fascinated with blockchain, you know, especially when, with Bitcoin. Um, probably in like 2016, 27, I got fascinated with Bitcoin as a blockchain technology. Was always interested in what else blockchain could do, um, not just be like a financial asset. Um, so again, then like 2020, I was still working. You know, I was working at the vaccine company and then had that experience. Um, started blogging about the internet computer, analyzing some data on it and everything, and um, joined, you know, became a big member of the ICP community and uh, ended up working for Definity now. Cool, man. That's, uh, you know, the, the, your guys' team's great. Mm -hmm. You know, we've spoken with them many, many times. You guys are at every event. You guys do a great job. Thank you. Um, really cool people, really, really, truly. Um, I want to know kind of some obstacles maybe you've had to face throughout this journey to get to where you are now. Yeah, I mean, I think... Uh, I mean, ICP is, is, is well documented of having lots of obstacles. Um, you know, probably the biggest one is uh, in Definity, we have not done a great job of like differentiating ourselves from other layer one blockchains, right? What we're trying to accomplish is something completely different than Ethereum and Solana. In fact, the point is like, we're not trying to even like compete with them. We're trying to actually add a lot of value to them, um, to other blockchains. And so uh, one of the obstacles is just kind of explaining this vision of a world computer, right? Like what is the advantage of having a decentralized cloud that you can host your entire software application on chain? Um, 
you know, and, and why, why do people want, like, why should people be interested in that? That's probably been our main challenge. Um, outside of that, it's, you know, it's, uh, we're very long-term focused. Sometimes it can be hard to be long-term focused in this industry where, you know, the news is always changing. You can't, changing. You, you just can't be, you yeah. just can't be. It's funny. I like to ask people like, where do you see, you know, we'll use Definity for example, five years down the road. And it's like, I was kind of shoot myself in the foot because how could anybody really have an idea? Because, yeah. you know, at, with such a rapid feel of evolution in this space is like, you know, it's really difficult to say. Yeah. You know, what's funny is, um, so I, I live outside Washington, D.C. Uh -huh. and I got, um, you know, so there's, you know, summits, there's like government blockchain summits and, and places where you can, you know, interact with you know, various government officials and everything like that. And um, when I talk with like government people in the government, and obviously they move really slow and they talk about like purchasing, you know, they talk about like technology solutions that are going to be like, they're like, oh yeah, it's like, it'll take us three years before we write the legislation around this specific technology. And then it'll take us a couple of years to adopt it and everything like that. And it's like, yeah, if you're talking three years, like it's going to be complete, like whatever legislation you're writing now, it's going to be obsolete in three years because this, this industry is just changing so fast. So it's just funny, the different time frames. whereas I think like, yeah, I don't know. It's three months from now. It's hard to predict. And yet you're trying to, <laughs> they're trying to like predict three years into the future. So, yeah, no, I yeah, know you, you just can't, you just cannot. Now, any insight for people on the outside looking in to maybe getting involved in blockchain and curious about, you know, Definity, for example? Yeah. I mean, again, I think, um, you know, there's really um, the, like the biggest area that we're seeing um, kind of like revolutionizing is, is AI. Uh, so being able to host entire AI models on chain, and then you inherit that security from um, the, the blockchain's consensus mechanism. Um, so people, like if somebody's just getting involved now, like AI is just where you want to put your attention to because um, it's just an area that's going to explode. And it's a, an area where um, typically in Web3, we're kind of focused on Web3 um, problems, but AI and hosting AI on chain is a web two, like it solves a significant web two problem of AI models. Just again, going back to the fact that the internet is insecure and, and um, the, the tech stack is too complex and there's too many layers, uh, hosting it on chain is solves a significant problem with that. And so I think that that's really the, to me, that's where um, everybody, you know, we talk about web three becoming mass market, you know, and, and every, and where, when, when the mass adoption comes, that's the mass adoption is, is AI on chain. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is a mass adoption. It's been a topic of discussion very much. Yeah. Here. And, um, you know, and I, I'm going to repeat it again, the inevitable wave of AI and Web3. Yep. And oh, yeah. um, no, it, it's beautiful. We're already seeing it before our eyes, but really they're going to start taking on more and more and more and more. Mm -hmm. Don't you agree? What? Yeah, 100%. I mean, it's, um, it's, I mean, when you just think about, if you go back two years or three years, like that's almost, that's the beginning of ChatGPT and how much has changed since like the jet first chat GPT rollout um, and like introduced the world to LLMs. And already now we're talking about like um, LLMs that are capable of like writing full applications and deploying them, you know, for you and like LLMs taking over like all, you know, like a genic, you know, these agents, these genic LLMs that are, that'll like operate on your behalf. And it's just, the industry's moving, like AI is moving really fast. Web3 is trying to keep up. And, um, and I, I really see that this is like, this is where, if anyone's looking to get into it, like that's where you put your energy into it. Right. No, no totally. Um, I personally use AI probably every day, like yeah. uh, as a tool, of course. And I know a lot of people are like, man, and there's a lot of people that are the no or the uh, the naysayers or the, the fear of the unknown, right? Yeah. And um, well, we have like like a great example. So like one way that the internet computers used in AI is mm -hmm. like, just mentioned like agents on chain so like hosting the hosting the agent on chain and then you're you get tamper resistance so like it can't be hacked it's much more much more challenging to hack an ai that's on a blockchain than one that's on like a web 2 service like um like amazon web services there's a whole nother field and this is like this again is like you know bringing uh, bringing web 3 to the masses the whole is we have a product that we're going to really soon that um it's called caffeine it's basically you you prompt the application you want so you know you're at the bar with your friends and you want to create an application to, I don't know, figure out who should pay the bill or I don't know, bet on March Madness or whatever it is that you guys want to do. You have an idea for an app. You want it built right now. You just go into the prompt. You kind of tell it what you want and it's going to actually build the code for you. It's going to do QA and testing on the code and then it's going to deploy it all within a minute. So you have a live running app in production. 
uh, you and your friends can go and use it. And then, like, let's say uh, you get a, have a couple more drinks and you say, hey, let's actually, let's keep changing this app. You just st- sit in that prompt window, keep telling it, like, I don't like the colors you chose, you know, make it, you know, I, I need, you know, you did a 32 team bracket, I needed 64. Yeah. Like, just those kind of things, and it'll kind of evolve itself, um, you know, based on your prompts. And do it in a way that doesn't, like, your app can still be running live. Your user data sits and, and, and doesn't get dropped out when you're updating it. So, like... Think about like now you have eight billion people who can launch apps uh, just by typing into prompts, and like this is, like this is like that that future where you're just like, well, what does that even look like? And now everyone's a developer, and and those kind of things of like it unlocks the creativity of every human being. You don't need a human to know how to develop code and also have a great idea. Anyone with a great idea will be able to get it built in, you know, in the time it takes them to drink a beer. So yeah, absolutely, man. Now, is there anything outside of caffeine you'd like to tell people about? Yeah, so, I mean, a, we talked enough about AI. Um, I don't want to chill too hard on AI, I guess. Uh, probably I've already gone past what I should on that. Um, but Bitcoin's the other thing. Uh, um, even though we're at ETH Denver, um, there's a clear kind of like acknowledgement that like Bitcoin DeFi's like really ramping up. Um, like Bitcoin's got a lot of like interesting projects on it. And so um, we're seeing, you know, uh, increased adoption of Bitcoin on ICP. People building Bitcoin apps that are, you know, doing like lending and borrowing, or or doing meme coins like a pump fund for runes and all that kind of stuff is like where a lot of other interest is kind of leaning into. So absolutely, man. Now, where can the people at home follow you and you guys? Yeah, so me personally, I'm at Kyle Langham on uh, on X. Um, that's probably the best place to find me. Um, you can follow Definity at at Definity. Um, if you're a developer, at Definity underscore Dev. Um, and then internetcomputer.org is like just a great place if you want to either join the community and, and get involved and start using apps or if you want to start developing and reading some docs. Um, all of that, like internetcomputer.org is, is where to find it. Cool, man. Well, Kyle, thank you so much. Man. Hey, my pleasure. Appreciate Thanks you. for having me. Brought to you by Hedera and Foresight Ventures. Hey, what's up? If you want to survive, you got to build a house. Ladies and gentlemen, the back of the Gen Z Media House. Oscar, thanks so much for joining us today.